seven months ago. Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. The stolen keycard worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempus Liquimen. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. Oh, that's why she changed. And that's what change is all about. Growing a future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink that we'll all be making that choice together. How great is that? This man is a liar. Excuse me. I will not. This town is a dangerous secret and perennial harvest only exists to keep it hidden. Nonsense. They picked up the whole damn town and moved it right under our noses. You aren't making any sense, dear. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Imagine such a thing. It's absurd and just plain impossible. They promised they could fix the file harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. We just had to leave town for a few days. While they had us evacuated. No, I said! I said they could have done something in the week. In the week everyone was gone in the hotels. Mrs. Hartford, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to. You're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You sniveling little worm. This is growing tiresome. Little help, please. Don't you all see? This vessel's a sham. An excuse to have the whole town gather in one place. They're planning something awful. I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. I'm Eleanor Van Horn. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Well, aren't you just sneaky as to dickheads? We all knew Valentine's fertilizer was too good to be true. And now this whole town is paying the price. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so sorry about this disruption. I hope she will take care of this obviously disturbed woman somewhere comfortable. So that she can get the help she needs. She's not the one who's disturbed. You two time clown. You all noticed something wrong with this town. Uh, it was just easier to look the other way. The truth is. Okay. That's quite enough, Mr. Nuncreed. What the frick's up with Solomon? <gasps> no! Oh, I just realized! Oh my... Okay, oh, bro, they ain't. There's no way. Ain't no way. That... Oh, that this is the dude who was supposed to have died. Ain't no way. And he just reverted to a child. Bro, ain't no way. Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncrete's face. And that's why he, like, acts weird. Yes, sir. Take them away. Now I want them to see this. Odd ever tempestuous Eleanor Van Horn. You've been quite the thorn in my side. With the weed that's burrowed and where it doesn't belong. I must confess you look dreadful. He paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Sweating yourself in wear company, you've managed to pull one over on me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to disrupt our little party. But alas, I expected something a bit more impressive than incoherent rambling. No matter, your failures are yours to bear. 
Mr. Kerr? Yes, sir. It's a shame it was cut short, but I thank you for that rousing oratory. I will take it from here. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. You can probably work for me, William. You look forward to the recompense we agreed upon. Kerr gave a bow of deference. Founder, you're most gracious. Gasps rippled through the crowd. Thankfully, we can spy dispense with the formalities from here Solomon on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. Oh my gosh! In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. Is him! A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. You can call, call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. A hushed horror gripped the crowd. This is a story about change. Uh, uh, what? No! So does this mean we can turn uh, his mom back? <laughs> ah, so you didn't see that coming. Good. Sharper examined his new hands. <laughs> this is quite the improvement. But they look so much smaller now. Oh, no, I was right about one thing. This festival will slip through. I wanted you all to witness my glorious return of your own eyes. Why does everyone look so downtrodden? This is a celebration, people. Maybe it would help if we set the mood. This took her. Be a dare and reveal the sign. Sharper Valentine Festival. Ah, wonderful. Sharper choked out a crude squawk of a laugh. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. Stop her, you malicious bastards! Malice. <gasps> that's the one I needed. The bet that's the one I needed for the other, the other branch. I'm glad you're back so I can tell you to your face. You destroyed this tent. We ain't gonna let you get away with it again. Sorry, this is not the time for audience participation. Some assistance, Mr. Kerr. Kerr gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. Ooh, coward! Does anyone else have something to contribute? A helpless quiet settled over the crowd. I thought so. Did you all truly believe you could be free of me? Town of complete and utter fools. You people should be celebrating my return. You're clearly lost without me. And that leads me nicely to my children. The daddy? I gave you both the greatest gift the present can give. The opportunity to prove yourselves in my absence. Squandered. You say I'm disappointed would be an understatement. But I... Silence, Augustus. An, an adult is speaking. I don't know which is worse, a son who is completely hopeless, or a daughter with such potential who inevitably lets me down. Harris, you fail me with admirable consistency. Thankfully, I was counting on it this time. Father, I... I have been wasting time, my dear. What have you accomplished? I was focused on cementing our legacy. Legacy? Who needs a legacy when you can just live forever? But what about... It's alright, kiddo. I'm afraid you suffer from a complete lack of imagination. There's just no helping it. Now then, where's Joseph? You didn't take the opportunity to slip off, did you? Ah, there he is. Everyone should give him a hand. None of this would have been possible without Joseph. I think you've said enough. Nonsense, the people deserve to know how helpful and loyal you've been. I only did what I did because he left me no choice. You always had a choice, Joseph. You were simply too weak to take it. No matter. Cheer up. You're about to be rich beyond your wildest dreams. You should have followed Mr. Kerr's example. When I found him, he was in a sorrier state than any of you. An aging actor, desperate to recapture his youth. He played his part and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again. Forever, in fact, if he remains loyal. That goes for all of you. Well, those who haven't already frittered away my goodwill. Beacon Pines is mine again. And I'm willing to share the spoils in exchange for absolute loyalty. 
Are you saying William Kerr was never in charge of perennial harvest? Ha! Huh. You think that puffed up leather skate could have accomplished all of this? Now I suppose it's time for your big exclusive. Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. You see, I need a figurehead to hold things down while I orchestrated my turn. Someone to misdirect, lie, built this town for a spell. So I invented William Kerr. Take your bow, you've earned it. Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Patrick C. Montesquieu. Despier Sir No We read about him in the in the thing. He wrote the book about himself. Bruh Fun, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. It truly really was the role of a lifetime. Wait. Wait. So this Bill Kerr was a pat seat the whole time? Now that your secret is out in the open, what's to stop this town from rising up against you? Oh, that's the delicious part. Fear. Thanks to our clipboards, I know what each and every person in this town fears the most. And I will make those fears manifest for anyone who steps out of line. It's very so simple. I'm not afraid of you. Ha! Huh, the young hero. Look at the keen on I, eye on you, boy. We, your friends, made a habit of disrupting my plans. What a pity. Things would have gone a bit differently. You might have had your moment of triumph. But that's fate for you. You can't do this. Oh, but I can. I have won. Never estimate what a great man can do given time. Now time is my plaything. Perhaps the most expensive thing I've ever bought. But well worth it. Ha. Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. Enough chit chat. Let's get to work, shall we? And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily, as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous, a secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The end. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. Yeah. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. All right. Why are eyes? We have the final one, I bet. I bet, I bet, I bet. I bet. Yes. I was right. Let me go in. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes. Okay, so this is, um, this is the timeline where Rolo is missing. If I'm remembering it's good, Rolo is missing. Um, I haven't met Beck yet. I don't think, yeah. I haven't met Beck yet. Rolo is missing. And now, this is when Luca got kidnapped before. Like a trap ready to spring. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. I just want this to all be over. Of course, I'm sure it will all work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for Rolo at the Luca treehouse. Luca free of Nuncrete's grasp. Of course. Luca, you know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. Book it! Book it! Book it! Book it, book it, book it, book it! 
get to a safe area. <laughs> Dude, this is a trip. Okay, so now we still gotta find Rolo. Homie's still missing. Oh, there's. Hey, who's he talking to? Is that another, like, reverse person? These festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now, if I were to throw a festival, it would be a thing to behold. I agree, this is all more than a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. But if we did a little something to spice things up, I'm listening. You know that festival sign waiting to be unveiled? It would be a shame the if someone... The two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. Who is that? Who is he talking to? There's gotta be another, like, um, shrunk down person. He looked down and muttered in a gruff voice. My most told me my problems would look smaller once I grew up. My problems will they seem to grow right along with me. Heavens, I sense big trouble ahead. Oh no. Okay. And let's go to the diner. So you can find stuff there. Have you something, right? Can I go inside the diner? No, ah. Identify yourself, please. Hey, it's Beck's mom, one of them, Nellie Modwell. I work here now and unable to locate you on your staff roll. I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. I harvest the leads. Wah! You get a rinse to the noggin sneaking up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's junkin', Sonny. Evening, Jeff. Isn't it kind of late to be a junkin'? I might as well ask the same thing of you. Find anything good? Five or some new harvest we've done even the junk is trash. You can learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. This bunch is all shredded paper and coffee cups. Well, I'd better get going. I didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. See what? Exactly. What's with this dude? I swear, man. Hmm. Hey, Jetson. Have you seen Rolo come this way by any chance? Ray not. Let's lose so fast. The fish in these to your pond. Let's check. See if we got any new stuff. Nope. Luca gently good first. Not yet. Rollo. He aired a long holler into the woods. Rollo. Huh. Rolo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire, the source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, 
until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket. A keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Luca's doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Yes. Is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Oh, snap. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. Don't answer. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Chapter 5 Dangers big and small. Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. What? Stop right there. Or I'll... Jeez, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Rolo, what the frick happened? Did you fall in the goop? Who are you? The large figure cocked its head inquisitively. Stop there, I'll clapper you with a baseball bat. Whoa, 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 take it easy. Look, you need to get your eyes checked. It's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I know you aren't Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle. Luca, quit messing around. It's me. If it really is you, prove it. Flaming chicken coop, Luca. Luca's jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo. Only bigger, older, changed. Wow. What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? I don't know. They threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big. Look. Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower. But beggars can't be choosers. Rolo, this wasn't just your hands. My feet, too? Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. What the? His hands shot up to his face. Holy Toledo! Rollo, did they do to it? What did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It kind of tasted like licorice. <sighs> Passed out and woke up like this. And then I sort of smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed open a cage? Kind of. At least I think I did. It's all a bit of a blur. They had you in a cage? Who are these people? 
I don't know who this is, this is you, but we're gonna fix it. Fix it? This is awesome! Well, I'm just glad you're safe now. Okay, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I knew where snatched people go. We may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger? Huh. <laughs> Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. Hey, fellas, With what's a up? Yelp. Rollo dove behind Luca. <laughs> yeah, take over. Did I come in a bad time? <laughs> Who the heck are you? Oh, she dyed her hair. Oh yeah, because this is what um. Oh, so yeah, we did meet back or something because like her hair got uh bleached. The, the white. It turned white because of the, the goop. Aged it. So I guess she dyed it blue. This is back. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened and I need help. I didn't know where else to go. So you're just hanging out here with your large adult friend? Uh, no. This is my buddy Rolo. This is your missing friend. One and the same. He seems a little old. Well, have you know, this is a recent development. The heck does that mean? Um, I'm sorry, you're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking new questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? Your silly little treehouse? I think you mean our silly little mission control. I hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I could hear your racket from a mile away. See, look at this is where, why we need to improve security around here. Not now, Rollo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened? Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rollo. Anything you say around me, you can say around Rollo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yep. Beck's eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try to salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Okay. Just need to play it cool. I hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing. I was just... Come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? This kind of felt like a change. It was going to take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess it just took your lesson to learn. Ilona tried to put on a smile. Before I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nellie had to go into work. Tonight? Her and Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a grade-A creep. He is! Him and his weird cult of personality. You're not going to ruin this job for Nelly. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough to her er, to exile her daughter to this podunk town. This place sucks. People are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains. She'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know, I grew up in a town that that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nellie come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But not another She piece. sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. I know moving is hard, honey, but that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel by dyeing your hair more... She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. Think how rebellious you'll look then. Very funny. Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Mom. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, the sound does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded? No. I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. 
can worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Great. Can we get back to the story now? This next part is the important bit. I have this radio. I upgraded with my mom. I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial in something worth listening to. Mr. Kerr, are you there? Mr. Kerr. Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Uh-oh. Oh, sir, it's so nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new lead, Mrs. Researcher of Deep Engineering? Nellie Modwell seems to be integrating nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I even had the chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor? Her work must be complete before the festival. I'll make sure she stays day and night until it's accomplished. Good, you know how I feel about those loose ends. Yes, sir. When she has finished the work, we need to make a determination regarding her. Long-term prospects in a company. Immediately, sir. So we have more time to fully bring people into the fold. You're in an game bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott. I can't afford to take any risk. Of course, sir. No loose end, sir. When she, she finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to a perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. So if I might suggest, maybe we should delay just for a bit. Oh? Yes, we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline. And rushing into things has caused some issues in the past. I see. I just understand I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all that you've done for me. Bill, I'll make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly. Not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You're only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Wow. Yeah. Just so we're clear. When they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like, actually killing someone. Capital murder. Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. No, as far as we know, Kerr is the top banana at perennial harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana on the field. What the hell is my mom caught up in? Has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was working to come in and continue to work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was the person Beck's mom came to replace? That which makes sense. Beck, it seems like Nellie's predecessor got, um, loose-ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. There's two ways. Two days away. Won't she just come home after work? That creep on the radio said they were going to hold her there until then. So if she's not coming out, we better go in and Beck get her. Beck flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Maybe this will help. You have blueprints? Well, it's really just a welcome map from my mom's PH orientation day. But it shows the layout. She looks like sure looks like blueprints to me. Look, here's the reception area. There's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exit mark. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have blueprints. You realize what this is, Rolo right? started to wiggle with excitement. I think we're heisting. This is officially a heist. Chapter 6 the heist. <laughs> 